Right, so pea velouté, so you've got your garlic, you've got your shallots, they're going to be sweated down without any major colour, just soften them up a little bit. Alright, and then we'll go straight on with the gnocchi, and the gnocchi is a herb one, so I'm using a bit of um, two types of herbs, I'm using a soft herb and a hard herb, which one's which? Thyme sage. So that's? Soft. Soft, but it's flatly parsley, it's a soft one, excellent, and that is a? Hard. Hard one, yeah. Give me it another. Has a well done. So give me another example oh, of a hard herb, chef. Chef, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Elena, think about it. Woody stove. Basil. What have you got? That's woody stove. What? Basil. Basil. Spinach. Hello. 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 Well done. Bay leaf. Excellent. Hard one. Thyme. Thyme. Rosemary. And rosemary. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Sage, thyme, rosemary, bay leaf. They're all your hard herbs. They're the ones that can go into cooking right at the beginning and it's not going to damage them parsley basil as you said gives another one josh soft coriander, coriander gives another one joshua mint spinach spinach i was going to say that david so obviously soft ones because of the delicate situation of them they need to go at the end all right but obviously we're making a gnocchi so it's going to be slightly different so you want parsley so we've got that, like I said, that's softened. So nice straightforward, nice and refreshing. And with the peas. <laughs> and I've got my stock. That's going to go in in a moment. So for me, like I say, parsley out. And get this ready. Let's bring that together. You want it nice and fine, yeah? So just roll it up nice and tight. Chiffonade, nice and fine, so when it goes through your gnocchi, you've got a nice fleck of green going through it. It says chives on the recipe, but we haven't got any, so that's fine, I'm not worried too much. But, but you know, we have chives anyway. it's alright, that's fine then. Well, well, lucky you that we've not got chives on it, yeah. Chef. Right, so we've got that, there's your herbs, there's your egg. I've got some butter melted, just a little bit. So, in with the stock. Basically, let that, let that gently cook down, gently not boil the backside off it, gently cook down for a little bit. Obviously, potatoes just come out of the oven, so they will be hot, chaps. Just here, that, ask David for four rices, well, actually six rices, please. Potato rices. So, obviously, what we need to do, eggs, flour, herbs, butter, I love a good potato. Salt, pepper. I don't, you see. I don't really Do particularly not? like a jacket potato myself. Oh my it's God. It's got to have lots of filling in it. If I, don't, if I have a jacket potato and it's a bit sparse on the filling, I'm like, really? You've got to have filling with like a bite of potato. Exactly. That's exactly it. Everything's got to have a bite in it. It's got to be. I mean, beans and cheese, lovely. But if you're not beans halfway through, what's the point? You That's why you just... do lots and lots of beans. So you know when you finish your jacket of potatoes, you can have the beans after. I'm not that extreme, but yeah, exactly. I am. Do you like potatoes? I do, yeah. Michael doesn't like them. No, well, no, I do. He but does, but with a lot of filling. Gotta have a lot of filling. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like it. Oh, I need to do it because obviously I've got Noah and I've got um, yeah, yeah. Lewis on, and next week I have four of the guys on. So. Oh, yeah. um, Yeah, I'm talking about it. Yeah, it's hard to hold as well. I don't like to take it on it. Okay, that was probably. Oh, well. Okay. No, no, yeah. Yeah, I'm not using a ricer. Yeah. So basically. Like so. Right, so in, scoop your tater out. Like I say, it's been baked in the oven, and we're using a specific type of potato so it's nice and floury. Yeah, we do want something that's waxy because I know good to near one. Yeah, so we've got a nice floury potato. So when we mash it down, could you use the stainless steel? 
Like, yeah, what can you use them for? Zero skin. Zero skins, yeah. <laughs> that is a prime example of good kitchen usage. Yeah, you're not wasting anything. Exactly, perfect. And that'll be another vegetarian dish. Yeah. Couscous. Couscous, yeah. Baked potato skins with couscous. This jack of this thing's not working. I'm going to throw it out the window in a minute. Yeah, so yeah, brilliant idea. Because you then, because what you're doing, obviously you've costed it into this menu. Yeah. Obviously you've got a little bit of filling going in it, whatever, this, that, and the other. But a couple of them, three of them on a plate with a bit, like you say, a bit of rice, a bit of spicy rice, a bit of cheese on the top, not costing you much. You sell them for eight quid as a special. Happy days, vegetarians, number one's happy. And that's eight notes, you know what I mean? That's a lot of easy money that you're making because you're using your noggin, yeah? So it shouldn't just go straight in the bin. I mean, you look at these, some of these modern trendy restaurants. What they do is they basically go in and these, they'll make them an emulsion out of the roast potato skin. So you're like, you know, you have, have a gel or, on the plate and desk the flavour of the potato, jack of potato, you know what I mean? You haven't got the jack of potato, but you've got the creamy, a creamy and emulsion that you're getting the flavour out of it. All right, I mean, some people do toast ice cream. Baked potato foam. Baked potato foam, we have that. Uh, I had that the other week, they'll, and nectar didn't I, done the um, potato foam. Baked potato Yeah, you know what I mean? So you get all the flavour, because you've got more flavour out of that than out else. So like I say, through in the ricer, in to your bowl. I would live off potatoes if I could. You've got, have you got Irish heritage? No. Have you not? Okay. So that's what obviously the, with the, the Irish, that's what, that's what scuppered them and then it was in the 17th or 18th century with the, the potato famine when they had a potato blight and wiped out all the crops. Oh, I remember learning about that in history. Oh man, so right they're going through and they're basically I'm just going to mix it out or else will be there all day. I'm going to be kneading it in a moment anyway. Right, so that's that. So that's basic. The knocky, yeah. Rice, key one now. We're not going to put the egg in straight away because what? Cook it. We cook it out a little bit. Yeah. Some with a damp, damp J cloth please. Yeah. So I want to season now. Season. We don't want it because it's a starchy product. Yeah. We don't want to basically make it too bland. Obviously, I'm not keeping them a day, guys, but we're well, we'll good call on that. So, season well, a bit of salt, pepper. Oh, Start mixing that around. Start cooling that down a little bit. In with your butter. In with your herbs. So you get them evenly dispersed. In with the egg. Just check, feel it. Feel it on here. That's delicate. Feel it there. You're used to you're getting used to heat. That's getting more and more numb. So you feel from the top, not from the bottom. Yeah. It's like when I come round if you're making a shoe paste or whatever. I check with that, not with that, because that tells me a better temperature because my hands are used to heat, so I don't really feel it. Yeah, as well as you like, we'll keep more, you get used to it. Right, that's it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not as nowhere near as what, good as what I used to be, the flour. Because obviously uh, I'm not in a kitchen all day, every day, big pans, heat and all the rest of it. So I'm not, I mean, but before I used to hot pans there any bother. Because your hands just couldn't feel anything. And I couldn't, I still like that, but nowhere near as much as what they were. Right, so there's my flour in. Now basically what you need to do is knead it like a dough. 
like a pasta dough, as we, as we made last week. So I'll come back and forth when I need it for the next job. So bring that in. Like so. You don't want it too wet, yeah? And then it gets a little bit on the wet side. Can you throw a little bit, please? So I think the problem. It's not going to hold its shape when you start kneading and when you start shaping it it'll start to collapse down and possibly break down as well. Yeah. So let the flour on. So you're baking a nice dough. Because it's a cooked product I'll taste it as well before I wrap it while it's still warm and obviously if I need it to add any more salt I will do. The flour we put in is bread flour, it's strong flour so it's got more gluten in it so we'll need a knead like a bread to sort of like extend them gluten, gluten strands. It's nice because the flour's not cooked. Oh, it's raw flour, but the, the seasoning is there. Right, so basically, what I want you to do is two potatoes from the lunch, please. Um, a ricer, make your 